Hi everyone, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 64 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. If you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel. Thank you for checking it out. I really appreciate it. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. You're awesome. I love you. Today is a very nice and sunny but cold Tuesday in November here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast. That is where you used to be able to find show notes for every episode. There have not been show notes for the past few episodes, but I'm hoping there will be show notes for today's episode. Go check it out if you're interested in looking at show notes. Um, and if there are not show notes, message me with any questions you have. I'd be happy to answer, but I'm hoping I'm going to get show notes up for today. We have a hashtag on Instagram running. I wanted to see what you guys are wearing and what your loved ones are wearing in terms of garments that you have made. So over on Instagram, there's the hashtag autumn and sweaters. And that's where, if you want to post a picture of yourself or your loved ones or whoever wearing your handmade garments, hashtag it with that hashtag. Put it up on Instagram, and at the end of autumn, I'm going to be drawing two winners from that hashtag, and I have a copy of each of these books to give away by Pip and Pin, her new books. One is called Strand, the other one is called This Must Be the Place, and they have some really, really great winter knits in both of them. So I'm going to be giving away a copy of each of those, and that was really generously donated by Megan Nodecker, who is Pip and Pin. Thank you, Megan. Um, so go check that out if you haven't yet. It's a fun thread to look through, and I'm all about sweaters, so, you know, check them out. Okay. <laughs> um, I have an FO. It is a little FO. They are the Rose City Rollers Littles. This is a children's sock pattern by Mara Catherine Breiner. It's the children and baby version of the Rose City Rollers regular edition. <laughs> and, uh, I knit this pair out of coloring book yarns in the autumn and mint colorway, which is a really beautiful self-striping yarn with this really great mint green color and it goes down to black. And this one has a little more black on the toe, a little less mint green on the cuff. Um, the Rose City Rollers Littles are my is my favorite baby sock pattern that I've knit so far. I've knit a few, and I really like this one the most. It doesn't have a cuff, which I didn't think was going to be... Um, I didn't think I was going to like not having a cuff, but I really do. don't know why. I just like it. <laughs> and it's got um, a whatchamacallit. Heel flap and gusset, which is my favorite heel for myself, and uh, apparently it is my favorite heel for babies as well. I like how it fits. So these are super cute, and they were super quick to knit. I knit them in like two days, which is awesome. I used a size one needle magic loop, one at a time, and she's been wearing these. I think I finished them maybe a couple weeks ago. I knit the second to smallest size, which may be zero to three months. It may be six, three to six months. Don't remember, but they fit her well. She is three and a half months old. My daughter Lucy is who I'm talking about. Okay, that's it for this. That is my only FO. I have quite a few works in progress that I have been working on this past, what, month or so since I recorded last? And I love all my projects right now. Let's start with the one that I'm not working on right now. So I have got my Hansel Hap, which is a pattern by Gudrun Johnston. Johnson? Johnston. Johnston. Every time. This is a Hap. And this is meant to be a baby blanket for my daughter Lucy. 
I started it before she was born. I'm still not done with it. Um, I am so far though. So the way this thing is constructed, which I think is a pretty typical traditional hat construction, is you knit the square, the center square first, and then you knit the border, and then you knit an attached edging. And so I've got the whole center square done, which is the natural cream color yarn, and that yarn is Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand-dyed yarn company in the undyed version of Natural Merino, which is my non-superwash, fingering weight, Falkland Merino base. It's wonderful, I love it. And the next color, the yarn that I used for the border is this. And this is Nunaba Yarns. And this is what's left of the cake. Now Nunaba Yarns is a yarn out of Australia. It uses white gum wool as its base, which is a non-superwash organic 100% wool. And she dyed it in like a color block kind of gradient-ish. And it started out with this taupey brown and then had a small section of this gray and then went to a pink. Now, as you can see, there's not much pink on here and I am done with the border. So, and I have this much left of the pink. I'm a little teeny bit bummed out that I didn't break off the brown sooner because I thought, based on yardage calculations in my head, which is not reliable, but based on that, I thought I was going to need like that whole cake for the border, but I did not. So I used all of the brown, all of the silver, gray, and then only used a tiny bit of the pink. And I wish it was a little more balanced, less brown, the silver, and then more pink. But that's okay. I'm not ripping back and doing it all over again. It's good. It's good. I got some pink in there. <laughs> and the way it's dyed, it's kind of, if you can see, it's m really modeled at the color transitions. So in some spots there's more pink, some spots there's less pink. And I think it looks really cool. I really like it. I do wish there was more of the pink, but I like how it looks. So, plus it's a baby blanket. She's not gonna care. Now, I am completely done with the border. And I just have to do the edging, which is done in the main color, the cream. And that's an attached edging. So it'll be lace and it's like triangles. <laughs> you knit it on as you go. So I just have to do that now. I haven't felt like doing it, so I kind of put this thing down. And uh, it's just been sitting here for a little while, but that's okay. I will get back to it. I will finish it. I am knitting these on my Haya High Interchangeables US size 8 needles. And I've got my Lost and Fond Kitty Cat in a Crescent Moon Progress Keeper, which I really like. So I've also got, this is my size 8. It's a just a bamboo double pointed needle and this is what I'll use to do the attached edging in. Um, now with, just in case you don't know, an attached edging is where you cast on a number of stitches just abruptly. So on your work you have these extra stitches that just come off perpendicular and you knit on those stitches back and forth across all of the live stitches picking up a live stitch on every row as you go. So your border is per knit perpendicularly to the rest of the shawl. So I'm gonna, with one of these needles, I'm gonna cap it off with a needle stopper. So if that's what it's called, those little things you screw on. And the other needle is gonna be my working needle. And I need a whole separate needle to be my other working needle. So a double point is really, really good for doing that. So I've got it ready to go. And I will get back to it one day. That's living in my Gasly's project bag. My next work in progress is, what do I want to show you next? We'll do this one. My next work in progress is living in 
my Woodsy and Wild Halloween bag. And it is the Aim True hat. And this is a hat, it's Colorwork Hat Pattern by Caitlin Hunter. And are you done, squirrel? She's done. This is a DK weight colorwork hat pattern. <laughs> it's free on Ravelry, so that was cool. And this is what I have so far. I have only done the cuff so far. It's one by one ribbing on a size US 3 needle. I'm using my Haya Haya Sharps interchangeable needles. Um, and I'm using Moonstone Dye Works. So the main color is Belladonna, and this is my Merino DK base, which is 100% superwash Merino wool. And Belladonna is a new colorway of mine. It is a tonal kind of berry color, and I really love it. There is some left in the shop if you're interested in that. And for the contrasting color for the color work, I am using um, Moonstone Dye Works in the Magical Creatures colorway. And this is a speckled colorway that I created for Moonstone Dye Works first birthday last year. And um, it is speckled with kind of that same berry-ish, magenta-ish kind of color. Um, some dingy greens and dark browns and kind of purpley colors. I really love this one. So these two are going to be my Aim True hat. And I'm excited about this one. I really needed a new hat for this coming winter. I've been wearing the same knit hat for like three years and I really wanted a new one. And uh, I saw this one and free Caitlin Hunter pattern. How can you go wrong with that? So we're working on that. That's been fun. And we're gonna save the most exciting one for last. Not that this next one isn't exciting. But my next work in progress is in a fat squirrel project bag. This was, I think, the very first project bag I ever owned. Or at least I ever bought. So this one is Andrea Mowry's Night Shift Shawl. And I saw this shawl on Ravelry and I fell in love with it. I've really been into the idea of slip stitch color work lately. I think it's a really, really cool design element. And I liked how she did it with the spin cycle yarn, um, which is something that's easily substitutable <laughs> with hand spun yarn, because that's kind of what they're replicating with spin cycle. Um, spin cycle is a yarn I've always noticed. They've always vended at Stitches West as long as I've been going. My local yarn shop, Yarn, carries Spin Cycle yarn, so I've gotten to see it and squish it in real life many times. But it, it is so pricey that I've never bought it. Um, and it's definitely worth the price, I'm sure, just because of the process that goes into it. It's such a cool yarn, and it's such a small, neat, independent process that they use to make it that it definitely warrants the price, but it's not something I've ever invested in. So, I thought I would use some hand spun for this shawl, and I am going to attempt to show you all of my yarns. There are five different yarns, one, two, three, four, five, five different yarns that I'm using. It calls for six yarns, but one of my yarns is kind of a gradient-ish, so I'm pulling from one end of it for one yarn and one end of it for the other yarn, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put a picture on the screen here of all the skeins out all the skeins laid out when I first picked them I went through all of my hand spun stash to pick yarns for this shawl because I wanted to find colors that went together well I needed to find weights that were going to go together well and kind of ish match the pattern so I finally picked after like a whole night of debating and I'm really excited about my choices so the first hand spun that I'm using is I'm not going to do them all together I decided because I'm just going to drop them all over the floor. This is colors A and B. So <laughs> this is a hand spun spontaneous spinning cloud from Loop Fiber Studios. 
This is one of my oldest spinning hand spun stashes. I really got into loop bumps when I first started spinning because of the Knit Girls. If you go back to their old episodes, they were really into Loop Fiber Studios. They had like, they were members of their club and everything and they just like really enabled me to be really into Loop Fiber Studios for a while. And the first time I purchased from Loop, they're also very expensive. So their Loop bumps, the proper bumps, are pretty pricey, but these spontaneous spinning clouds are less expensive. And what the spinning cloud is, is just like, I don't know how it's prepped, but it's not prepped in the same way as their bumps. It's just like kind of a bunch of loose fiber. And I'm not gonna speak to anything beyond that because I don't know, but <laughs> it was a bunch of loose fiber in a bag. I remember spinning this. I had a very hard time spinning it. It was very difficult for me to spin. I didn't really enjoy it. But I love how the yarn came out. It's been in my stash for a while and I finally get to use it and I'm so excited. This is a two-ply. It's probably like a sport to DK weight. Sport to DK weight. The outside is like this dark wine color. And as you get to the center, it's more of a teal and black kind of color. And the pattern pretty much calls for 50 grams of each color. So I'm pulling from the outside for the first color and I'm pulling from the inside for the second color. And the next color after that, the third color is this. And I tried to kind of tie all the colors together. So this teal kind of goes along with this one. And this was a bat. I think it might be the only bat I've ever spun. It was sent to me in a fiber swap that I did a very long time ago. And I don't remember the dyer or where it came from or anything. I like got rid of all the information when I spun it for some reason. Don't know why. But I spun this a long time ago. It's a woolen spun yarn and it's super fluffy and super nice and it's teal green with pink flecks in it. And I think the pink flecks are probably silk and the rest is just wool, if I remember correctly. So this is my third color. Fourth color is this one, and this is, that last one was a two-ply. I think these are all two-plies. This one is some hand-dyed fiber that I had in my stash that I gave the tag away to. I gave the tag away when I gave half of this fiber away to a friend, and um, so I'm not sure what it is, but I think it's probably Cloud Lover or possibly Spun Right Round. I think it might be Polworth, possibly. But um, it's a two-ply. This one's a little chunkier. This one ended up being, I think this is like a DK. This one's more like a maybe Aaron. And this one's really heavily barber pulled, which I really like. After that, we have got this one. This is some Julie Spins in the princess colorway. This was also one of the first braids of fiber that I ever bought off Etsy. I kind of just, I had never heard of Julie Spins. I kind of just searched hand-dyed fiber and found it and loved it. So I bought it and I only spun it up pretty recently. Most of this braid went into the yarn that I am going to use for my Sonder shawl. I spun up uh, two skeins of bulky weight using this for some of the fiber. And then this was what I had left over, so I just two-plied it on itself. And this is pretty heavy. It's about as heavy as the last one. So it's really cool. And then the last one is this. I went deep stash for this, you guys. This is also, <laughs> I think this might have been, I think this was the second thing I ever spun on my ladybug spinning wheel. Um, the first thing that I ever spun was some thin fiber, which was two braids of fiber of the same colorway that came with my wheel. Um, she just like threw it in there for free, which was awesome. So this is the second thing I ever spun on it. And this is from North Star Alpacas. And it is Alpaca Cormo Merino Silk and Angelina. And this is two ounces, and this is crazy buttery soft, you guys. 
this is like seriously like that kind of buttery feeling oh it's really wonderful it's really fluffy really squishy i mean this is two ounce is it no i think this must be four ounces i think i must have had two two ounce braids of it or maybe it was bats I don't remember, it was so long ago. <laughs> but um, here's the tag. And it's got an alpaca named Rhodey on it. So that's probably the fiber that's in there. And it's this really beautiful lavender color. And it's really gorgeous. It's got so many different flecks of color in it and sparkle. And it's so cool. And I'm really happy to be using this one. This one's been in my hand spun stash for so long. So that's all the yarns that I'm using. Um, and it kind of goes from like green to pink is kind of the color range I was going for. And here's my shawl so far. Are you ready to see it finally? <laughs> so this is the Night Shift. Again, this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And all of this color work stuff are, is done by slip stitches. It's called mosaic knitting. And it's super fun so far. I really love it. It's a super simple pattern. It's really engaging and really fun. I love how it's working up so far. The pattern, I can't remember if I already said this, but it calls for a worsted weight yarn. And um, as I've said, all of my hand spun yarns that I'm using for it are kind of varying in weight. So it's really adding to the texture of it, which I really like. And I'm knitting this on a US size 8 needle. These are my Lika needles for my interchangeable set. It's super fun. I really like it. And I've got my Tilting Planet Bow Progress Keeper on it, which is super pretty. So this is making me really happy. I really enjoy working on it. And look how cool it is. I love it. I just love it. So that's been really great. It's really fun for me to work on a project that uses a whole bunch of different yarns. I feel like that really keeps me engaged more than a shawl project that only uses one yarn. I really like single color shawls, but the ones that use more than one yarn just really keep my interest a lot more. So I've really been enjoying that. I have been knitting along with Stacy from Stress Knit. She is doing a year of Andrea where she is knitting one Andrea Mowry pattern every month for a year. And while I haven't been doing that, I have been knitting an Andrea Mowry pattern kind of one after another. So that is for that. And my last project. This is the big one, you guys. This is the thing that I am most excited about. Another Fat Squirrels project bag. So this is a sweater that I'm knitting. I gotta be really careful with this. This is Guthrie by Caitlin Hunter. And Guthrie is an all-over colorwork pullover, but I have decided that I want to make it a cardigan. So Caitlin Hunter knit a Guthrie and then later decided she wanted to make it a cardigan. So she steaked it, made it a cardigan, and it like won me over so hard. I felt like I needed it. I needed to do it. I needed a Guthrie cardigan. So I went researching and figured out what yarn I was going to use and figured out how I, well, I decided that I was just going to do it and steak it, even though I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'll talk about that in a minute. Here's what I have so far. So it's a top-down pullover. I've got, I don't know if you can see because it's black yarn, but there's two by two ribbing for the neckband up at the top. And then it starts in with this amazing color work pattern in hot pink. Yeah. Um, I have messed up a couple times on the color work. 
but I will talk about that in a minute too. Let me show you the yarn that I'm using. I'm using Plot to Lopi, which I'm so excited about. <laughs> so this is an Icelandic unspun yarn. Um, the company that makes it is, I think this is the company name. It's a little confusing to me, like how it all works, but is Tex. Um, they're the company that also makes um, Let Lopi. This is Plot Plotulopi. And this yarn comes in these plates. And like I said, it's unspun. So that's what it looks like. I'm using pink, which I got this from the Wooly Thistle. And on the Wooly Thistle website, they call this shocking pink. And I think they call this just black or maybe black heather. I'm not sure. But isn't this going to be amazing? Oh, I'm so excited about it. I like dreamt about the Guthrie cardigan in black and hot pink. And I'm making it happen. Um, first, I'll talk about the yarn. I love this yarn. I really, really like working with it. I knew I wanted to make this sweater, so I went searching for yarn specifically for the sweater. Um, I came across this and I thought it might work, so I did some research. I looked on Ravelry at other projects. The sweater calls for a sport to DK weight. And this, it's, it's not, I don't think, really agreed upon on the internet, at least from what I could tell, what the weight is. And I think part of that is because not everybody everywhere in the world uses the weight system that we use here. Um, so some people have called it a sport and other people have called it all the way up to a Worsted or Aran weight. And so I was trying to look at other people's projects to see what kind of gauges they were getting and what kind of patterns they were knitting with it. Um, a viewer let me know that a lot of times what they'll do, what people will do with this yarn is knit it held double. Um, it's very fragile. It's unspun, so it's very fragile and it's very thin. Um, I was concerned about that because I'm doing color work. So doing color work with an unspun, very fragile yarn um, was a concern to me. But I, you know, I looked up all the projects that people made out of this yarn and most of the projects made with this yarn are color work sweaters. Um, granted, maybe a lot of those are knit with the yarn held double, which makes it stronger, but a lot of them didn't really say that in the project notes. Um, so after doing my research, I decided this yarn was probably going to be fine and I was going to do it because I felt like I liked the yarn. I wanted to try it. If it didn't work, I wasn't going to be sad. I could always use the yarn for something else. I ended up purchasing four plates of the black and three plates of the pink, which is more than enough yardage for what the sweater calls for. But I needed more because I want to make the length a teeny bit longer. I want to make full sleeves instead of three quarter sleeves. And I need extra yarn to do the steak panel and the button bands. So I have plenty of yarn, I think. Plus I needed plenty of yarn to swatch because I wanted to get my gauge right and I wanted to practice steaking with my swatch, so I wasn't gonna be able to reuse that yarn if I needed to. Also, I was scared of unraveling yarn. Even if I didn't steak my swatch, I didn't know if I could unravel it and reuse it because it's so fragile. So, I bought this with all that in mind. <laughs> um, I swatched for it, and my gauge came up quite a bit smaller than was needed for the pattern. This was my first swatch, and I really like the fabric, but it was quite a bit smaller than what I needed. I added a steak panel here, and I absolutely adored working with it. I fell in love with working with this yarn and color work with this swatch. My second swatch, you wanna see it? It's cut. Um, so what I did with this one is I went up a needle size, knit half of it, went up another needle size, and knit the other half. Oh wait, no, that's what I did with this one. My goodness, this was my first swatch, this is my second swatch, two different needle sizes. Anyway, unimportant. <laughs> so 
after knitting with three different needle sizes, I went with my middle needle size, which is a US size 5. That's what I'm using for this. And so I knit these two swatches and I knew I needed to try steaking. So I blocked them first based on a poll that I took on Instagram. Thank you for those of you who participated in that. Most people said to block it and then steak it. A few people said to steak it and then block it. Um, I went with the majority. It seemed to work fine. So I had this unsteaked, just sitting there. And I kind of wanted to like do some research and try to do button bands on my swatch and like really get it right. Um, but then one day I was just sitting there looking at it and really unceremoniously, I was just like, F it. And I took some scissors and I just cut it. <laughs> it was really anticlimactic. It was really like easy and just like, okay, well, I guess I did that now. And I steaked it and it's fine. I did not do any reinforcements. And it seems fine. It seems absolutely fine. I've been keeping it in my project bag. Um, and every once in a while, I'll go in there and kind of like rustle it around, see what happens. And so far, nothing's come unraveled. It seems totally good. And so I think that's what I'm going to do with the final sweater is not do reinforcements. And hopefully it'll be fine because it's non superwash. It's pretty dang sticky. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And if it does, well, then I'm going to learn from my mistakes. So I steaked for the first time. I really wanted to record it. But like I said, it was super unceremonious and I just did it. And then it was over and it was great. So converting a pullover pattern to a steaked cardigan pattern. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I told myself and you guys that I was going to do a bunch of research and really figure out how to do it before dump, jumping into it. That's not happening. You guys, I'm really kind of winging it here. <laughs> um, I so far what I've done is I added a steep panel, which is right here. And it's five stitches in between these stitch markers, alternating colors. And the beginning of round for the pattern was in the back. So this is the beginning of the round. And I thought originally that I wanted to move the beginning of the round to the front so that it would be along one of the steak edges so that there wouldn't be a jump in the back where the pattern repeat began again. I decided that was way too much trouble. And I don't even know if my concern about the pattern jumping is really valid. So I decided to forget about it. And I just kept the beginning of round in the back and I added the steak panel to the front. And that's where we're at for now. So that's pretty easy. That's really all I have to worry about for the whole entire time that I knit the sweater. That's the only modification. And it's a super easy modification. I just added five stitches to the cast on, put in two stitch markers around those five stitches at the very middle and just do, I just did alternating lines of color work within that steak panel. And the rest of it's exactly the same. So I'm good for a pretty long time. I don't have to do any other weird modifications until the very end. Now what I think I'm probably going to do is pick up stitches for the button band before I steak. And then cut it. And then I don't know exactly what I'm going to do after that. I don't know what, if you just have the button bands and then you have your back fabric that there's like two rows or so of fabric that need that's just hanging out there. I'm not sure if you just let it hang out there or if you fold it back and do something or if I'm going to do something called a steak sandwich, which I learned from the I think from the Kate Davies website, I think. If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself. But I'm not exactly sure yet how I'm going to treat that edging. I know I'm not going to reinforce it, but I'm not sure then how you deal with it under your button bands. So I'm going to figure that out later because I'm not there yet. So I'm not too worried about it yet, but I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. And I think that's like it, right? I think that's it. I think it's that easy. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed working with this yarn 
in color work. So far, it's been really great. I haven't had any trouble with it breaking. It has broken twice and that's it this whole time. The first time that it broke was because I had a strand of it wedged in the couch cushion and I yanked it. No, I, I mean, I didn't yank it. I really gently pull it up. I work with this yarn pretty gently. Honestly, not more gently than any normal yarn. Um, so I think I may just kind of be a gentle knitter anyway. But I had a strand of it wedged in the couch cushion and it broke. The next time it broke was when I messed up and I had to rip back. Um, so I messed up like four rows back at one point and I decided I needed to rip it back because I didn't want that kind of mistake hanging out in the sweater. I was concerned about it not ripping out well, so I just knew like I'll rip out these four rows and if the yarn is ruined because it's so fragile, then fine, I'll just use new yarn. But it wasn't, it ripped out really well. Like I said, one strand broke once and that was it and it's really easy to spit splice back together. So the other time that I messed up was the very first color work row I messed up because in the color work chart, there's you know black and white blocks in the chart and the way my yarn corresponds to it the pink is the black blo block and the black is the white block so that confused me the first row and I totally did it wrong um, but this first row these pink dots it's supposed to be switched it's supposed to be a line of pink and a dot of black but I decided to leave it because I kind of like how it looks and I've really been enjoying working with it. Like I said, I haven't had any trouble at all with how fragile it is, and I'm super surprised about that. But it's been great, it's been really fun. I really like how, I don't know if you can see the halo on it, but it's really, it is really kind of rough. Um, it's got almost, I don't know if they're guard hairs per se, but it's got, wool that comes off of it that are almost like guard hairs. They're really long, kind of prickly pieces of wool that just like stick out everywhere. I'm not a sensitive person when it comes to wool, so I'm not worried about it. Plus it's kind of an outer garment anyway. But that to me only just added to like the 80s-ness of this sweater, which is kind of what I'm going for. So <laughs> um, I really, really enjoy this wool quite a lot. And I'm pretty proud of myself. I think this is a really cool project. I really, really wanted this as a cardigan and I'm just doing it. I mean, I could be doing it in a more structured and uh, intelligent and researched way, but F it, I think it's gonna be awesome, so. <laughs> that is that. And, oh, I seriously love this so much. I did not even think I was gonna love this wool as much as I do but I really do. It's so fun to work with. And it's so fun to pull it off of these plates. I'm doing it, I'm pulling from the outside rather than the inside, which I usually do anyway. And um, it's working out good. I love my Plutti Lopi. So, Caitlin Hunter did do her steaked Guthrie as part of like a steak along. So she does have some information on steaking in a thread in her Ravelry group. I didn't see any specific information for converting a pullover to a cardigan um, with forethought rather than afterthought like she did where she just knit the thing and then cut it and then that was it. But like information on adding a steak. Anyway, I didn't see much information on that. There might be some in there though, but like I said, I'm winging it and I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. All right, so that's all my knitting. Next, I wanna tell you about some yarn that went into the shop recently. Um, I am the dyer behind Moonstone Dye Works on Etsy. You can get there through moonstonedyeworks.com or through the link below. And the shop is fully stocked right now and I wanted to show you a few of the things that you can find in there now. So I dyed a couple of brand new colorways and I'm really excited about them. Um, there are a couple of tonals and this is them. So this is Belladonna. This is the yarn that I'm using in my Aim True hat. And this is it on the Stellina sock base, but it is in the shop on other bases as well, including the DK. And I love this colorway so much. Um, the next tonal that I did is called Wild Honey. 
and it's a golden honey color. It's another tonal. And so there's a lot of variation within the color family in this skein. And again, this is on Stellina Sock, but I have it in the shop on quite a few different bases, including my natural merino, which is the non-superwash fingering weight base. And those are the two new colorways. I have a bunch of regular colorways in the shop too. Um, and I just pulled out a few to show you, but there are tons more. Um, so this one is Crescent Moon. And this one is on DK. And this is a speckle neutral. And then I also have Waxing, which is a tonal gray. And these two are actually kind of meant to be complementary to each other. And so these look really good together, I think. Um, the next two are Imbibe and Gogo. This is Imbibe, this is Gogo. And these are two speckle colorways that I created for Moonstone Dyrex's first birthday last year, along with Magical Creatures. And so I have some of those that I've dyed recently up in the shop. And like I said, if you're interested in checking that out, they're all there now. And um, I'll see you there if you want to. Okay. Uh, moving on to favorites. I have a couple of things to talk about. The first is um, a small yarn acquisition that I got a couple of months ago um, and forgot to talk about on my last episode or two. So I went to my local yarn shop pretty recently, a little while ago. And they have this program, I can't remember what it's called, but it's where you sell them your stash yarn and you get credit for other stash yarn that they have purchased from other people. Um, no, I can't remember what it's called. So I took in a bunch of yarn to them that I knew I wasn't gonna use. It's just been sitting in my stash forever. I got a bunch of credit for um, this yarn. Pro it's called the Yarn Exchange Program, that's what it's called. I got a bunch of credit and I picked up a couple of skeins while I was there with that credit. And this one is Blue Moon Fiber Arts in the Lacy Base, which is 100% merino wool in a lace weight. And it's this really great deep black and purple variegated colorway. And the colorway is called Valkyrie. And this is a pretty big skein. It is 1,750 yards of a lace weight. And it's a really nice plump two-ply lace weight. So I thought this might be able to be a sweater's quantity for myself for like a little cropped lace cardigan or something. Um, it was just really pretty. The other one I got is from Imperial Yarns. It's their Tracy base, which is a wool and spun sport weight base. And this is 100% wool. It's in the spring sage colorway. And I have knit with this yarn before and I really love it. Um, I actually have a skein in my stash already of the same yarn in this gray color. So I picked this up thinking these two could go together for something. I'm not sure what yet. It's not that much yardage. These are 400 yards each of a sport weight. So I've got this now and I like it. So that's my recent acquisition. Um, next thing I'm gonna talk about is this sock thing that I'm gonna be doing. I have decided that I have, so I have a bunch of hand knit pairs of socks. I don't wear all of them. I wear some of them and I never wear the other ones. And that's because not all of them fit me that great. When you are a sock knitter, you kind of end up going through this period of knitting yourself socks that may not fit that well because you're experimenting with fit to see, you know, where you need to go to make socks that fit you really well. So naturally, I have a bunch of socks that don't fit great. This is where I keep all my hand knit socks. And here's a peek into it. Now, what I'm going to do is starting, I started this like a week ago. Every single day, I'm gonna wear a pair of hand knit socks and I'm gonna wear a different pair of hand knit socks. I'm gonna go through my whole hand knit sock stash every single day, one pair of socks a day. 
And I'm gonna, as I wear them, decide which ones I wanna keep and which ones I do not wanna keep. So essentially I'm culling down my hand knit sock collection because there's just some of these socks that I never ever wear and I, I'm, the, I'm a person that just like hates keeping things around that don't ever get used. Like I need to get rid of them. So um, I'm doing that and what I think I'll do is save the pairs that I wanna get rid of and offer them to my nieces who are like seven and 10 years old. And I have a pretty small foot. I wear a size five and a half US shoe size. And a lot of these socks, the reason why they don't fit that great is because I knit them a little bit too small. And so maybe they'll fit them and maybe they want some used hand knit socks. Who knows? If they don't want them, that's totally cool. I don't know what I'll do with them. Probably maybe donate them to a thrift store. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I feel like I need to cull my collection. So I'm doing that and I've been doing it for about a week. And so far, I think about half the socks I've worn are getting kept and half of them are getting gotten rid of. I'm really excited about this project. I've got, I don't even know, I kind of wanted to count to see how many hand -knit pairs of socks that I have, but I've got a bunch. So I don't know how long it'll take me, maybe a month? I'm gonna guess 30. I'm guessing I have 30 pairs of socks. So I think that's pretty exciting. Um, I like this idea. And I'm also just excited that I'm gonna get to wear every single pair of, so every single pair of socks that I have because there's some of these that I haven't worn probably in like over a year. Okay guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you're still here, thank you so much. I know this was probably a long one. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic autumn. Join in the hashtag on Instagram, autumn and sweaters. If you liked this video, please do like and subscribe. I would appreciate it very much. And have fun and stay awesome. Bye guys.